Hello there, it's uh, Noisy Andrew, and um, I'd like to build a boat. Now, I already have some boats, uh, probably a few too many boats. Um, only one of them is really worth anything, and that's actually not worth very much, uh, but it is a lot of fun. But it needs a little boat to go with it, because when we go, like, on a trip, uh, normally we race it, but we do, like, sail to islands and things like that around the coast of Western Australia. Uh, because it has a keel thingy that sticks out the bottom, you can't take it right into the beach. Um, it's okay, because it makes it a better sailing vehicle than if it had a wind-up keel. Um, but even though it only takes about one and a half metres of water to float, and the keel's steel, so you could just run it onto the sand and jump off and, you know, be wet to your belly button, um, you don't always want to do that. So we're going to make a little tender um, so that we can, like, tow it around behind the boat um, and when we go somewhere we can drop anchor, jump in the tender and go and find the pub or the cafe. But there's a few things about this boat that I'm wanting to make. First of all, it's my design and I'm doing it by eye. I've done myself uh, a drawing so I sort of know what, which direction I'm heading um, but that's about it as far as measurements are concerned. Although it is going to be 2.4 metres long because that's how big a sheet of panel is. Um, I think that's eight foot in bananas. Anyway, there's a few criteria. First of all, it has to be stable. So, you know, um, the good woman and her friends who aren't necessarily quite so boaty, actually the good woman is pretty damn boaty, but doesn't have a great deal of uh, inherent stability. So this has to be stable enough for someone to get in and out of it or do other boaty things in it without it feeling too unnerving. It's got to like sit good in the water. So it's going to have a pretty flat bottom through the middle of the boat. Secondly, I'd like it to have a pointy bow. Now the bow isn't going to be too pointy um, because like it's so short and we need some buoyancy. Um, but uh, I'm still going to try and make it pointy-ish because boats that are like 2.4 meters long often don't have pointy bows. They often have like a punt bow punt, careful how you say that, um, and I want that, we'd like this boat to have a pointy bow. Um, thirdly, we have to be able to row it, put a very small outboard on the back, uh, one that's only three horses, because that's the one we use for the, uh, the boat that it's tendering to, um, and I'd also like to be able to sail it, because like sailing, that's what you got to say, sailing. So. With the sailing aspect though, all the spars, that is the mast, the boom, it's probably going to have a gaff as well. Um, they all have to fit inside the boat when it's under a tarpaulin and in the garden, like being bored because we're not using it. And the final thing about doing this is I'm going to build it out of MDF, medium density fiber board. When you look on the internet, everyone's like, oh my God, and they're possibly right but I'm not convinced. So a while ago, I got some tools off the back of my ute stolen. I've always had a metal lockup case for my like power tools and things, um, but my hand tools were in a big bag, um, you know, chisels, spanners, pliers, um, you know, those sort of things, clamps. They were all in a big bag on the back and it was under a tarpaulin. One day when I was shopping, someone peeked under the tarpaulin and took my tool bag. Well, you know, I hope they're using it and getting some value from it. But it prompted me to make myself a toolbox. And I did this with my boat building experience because I actually have built bits of a boat before, repaired bits of a broken boat, uh, remodeled bits of a boat, but I've never built a whole boat. A bit like eating an elephant. Actually, I've never eaten any part of an elephant, but you know the saying. Anyway, I built a, a toolbox for the back of my um, ute the same way that I would build a boat made it out of plywood, and then I sheathed it in epoxy and fiberglass. And that's why the MDF in this boat is going to survive, because anybody who knows anything about timber will tell you, and calling MDF timbers a stretch, um, if you put it anywhere near water, it falls apart. Uh, we were at a lovely little cottage playing board games, please visit my Party Meeple channel as well, um, and someone had put some trim around a veranda made out of MDF skirting boards. Now, a skirting board made out of MBF is fine if it's not in a wet area, like a laundry or a bathroom or outside. Um, so you can like see what happened here. I, I put the picture up, but you know, if I remember to, I should do. 
Um, and that's what happens to MDF if it gets water on it. But the idea is to keep the water off this MDF. And we're going to do that with epoxy and fiberglass. Now the thing about building small custom boats is you would often use a foam material. Here's someone here. This, this, here is some here. This is called PVC foam. It's about eight millimeters thick, this sheet. Um, you would form your boat out of it, cover both sides of it with fiberglass, which would give you like a very stiff and strong eggshell, um, and then put the bulkheads and the fittings and everything else in there, like flip it up, flip it right side up and, and fit out the inside. And that would give you your boat. And people build boats of all sizes with this, and we would call this a core material because it's inside two layers of fiberglass. But this is expensive. This is around about $100 a sheet at this thickness. Um, and it's a full sheet isn't even this, even 8 by 4 in bananas, you know, 1.2 by 2.4. It's like 1.8 by I think 900. So it's been a while since I've bought some of this. So it's very expensive. Now my little boat is going to be made out of three sheets of three millimeter. I have something here. Here we go of three millimeter MDF. Now you can see from this, it's actually got a bit of strength to it and it's very, very puncture resistant. When you build your boat out of PVC foam or, or a foam core material, and they use things like balsa and stuff as well for this, um, you need to put enough of a skin of fiberglass on it that it will be puncture resistant. So if someone drop something sharp or angular like an anchor or something like that on it, it doesn't punch through into the foam because if water gets into this foam, it's not as bad as water on MDF, but it's still pretty bad. This is uh, an open cell foam, so water would capillary through it, make it all soggy, and the fiberglass would come off and you would have a repair you needed to do that if you didn't get onto uh, fairly quickly, would like slowly propagate around that area of the boat and pretty much make it rotten. It, rotten. It's not that there's anything there to rot, but it's the same sort of effect. So with MDF, because it's so puncture resistant, I will need to put less of a skin on it. So what I did was I made myself a weight with a 40 degree um, point on the end and I dropped it. And so from about a meter, and I, I, I eyeballed it like everything else, but the further this goes into the uh, core material, the, more punch, the less puncture resistant it will be. So I tested it against some plywood, which you would normally use for this, marine ply you would normally use, and some MDF. And the MDF, three millimeter MDF, was very, very puncture resistant compared to the plywood. And this really impressed me. So this means less epoxy and fiberglass. We do not need to spend hundreds of dollars on foam core for a tiny little boat. And hopefully it works. I'm not 100% sure, but given I'm only spending $45 on the core material, all of it, and about 300 on the epoxy to go out the outside of it with the glass and, and the various fillers and things I need, I think it's an experiment worth trying. So here I am crawling around on the floor because I was too lazy to clear off my workbench slash old kitchen table that you can see off to the right. It's got a glut of old pro project detritus and things on it that I was too lazy to organize and I just wanted to get on with this. Anyway, I drew a center line on my piece of uh, MDF and then um, marked out the maximum width of the boat and the front and how wide I'd like it to be at the back. And another little point, just something near the bow to get the angle right. And I used a batten to like draw myself a curve so I could see like what shape I'd like the boat to be. And as I said earlier on, I did this by eye. So that, that curve was drawn through basically four points in total. Um, I moved the batten down. I didn't have a big long one. Um, this is just a bit of timber I cut um, and just fared it in by eye with once again using some nails to hold it. Um, and 
got my boaty curve. Then I get, then then I get the jigsaw to cut around it. Jigsaws are are a great little hand tool for cutting around like curves and and well jigsawy shape type things. Well, this isn't a jigsawy shape, but it's a you know a boaty shape. So like you could probably cut around a curve with a different type of saw but you know these devices are great for thin panel and and such they're not so good at cutting thicker stuff but this is three millimeters thick anyway you can see my boaty shape is coming on and looking quite boaty and i use the cutout on the other side of it to make it symmetrical the next thing is i want a little bit of v in the bow a lot of these skiff shaped boats are just flat on the bottom and boxy up the sides and that's uh, uglier than i want this is going to be ugly but i don't want it to be that ugly so what i'm doing is um making a little pleat that runs down the first it's nearly a meter long this i think from memory um and i use a, a stiffer batten to get this curve right this is actually a curve so it fares into the center line at the at the uh, far end and it curves away from the center line at the bow and um once again eyeballing and nails um pull the nails out get the jigsaw going again uh where are we you can see see i like my toes to breathe when i'm working actually i usually wear work boots but you know when you're working like this it's you know and the threat to your feet is less um you tend to put thongs on but oh hang on i forgot to make the noise anyway there's my pleat cut out oh and getting back to work boots yes i would normally wear work boots i was too excited to go and put them on then i stitched it together with some cable ties you drill a little hole in each side of the pleat and put a cable tie in and i didn't like that uh, so I thought I'd make the pleat even bigger. Now, the fact that I'm using 3mm MDF, it, it, it's flexible enough that I can torture it like this or deform it, I guess. And um, so here am I remeasuring and opening up the pleat to make it even bigger uh, because I'd like a little bit more of, a bit more shape in the bottom of the boat. So now again, I need another batten that's probably a little flippier so I can make this uh, pleat more curvy towards the bow and straighter at the back. I'm basically using a nail uh, and my foot to hold it. And once again, the good old Mark One eyeball is coming into play. And you can see I've, I've added more curve to the front of that. And now we have the shape I want. Once again, cable tied together. And I think this is a pretty good point for us to say that's progress. So. Stick with me for a few episodes of uh, the MDF boat, which I am going to call a blowfish because despite the fact it does have a pointy front on it, it's fat and ugly. Um, and maybe, maybe you can come sailing with me in a few episodes. Subscribe and like this if you want to know what's happening. And besides, I'd like, you know, a bit of channel support, not for any reason other than you know, ego. Uh, more people looking at my smile is a good thing. Possibly. <laughs>